black dragon Tasha here getting skinny this is getting skinny look at the view bam you need to get up here god damn tired see ya And we would talk for hours and hours, and I would train and instruct every single solitary actor. And I got to put my motorcycle club in them. I got to tell the story of the OGs. And that's why I say, tell your stories. Don't let anyone define you. Don't let anyone say you ain't nothing. Don't let anyone say you're only a 99 percenter or you're only a RC or you're only a family club or you're only this or you're not that or you're not this or you're not that or you're not good enough. Let no one define you. Make your stories heard. Write, blog, blog, moto blog, YouTube, create. You have so many ways to create them that we didn't have. You have so many ways to create now that we didn't have them. But you can do it. I was fortunate enough to be one of the creators that brought to this day so far the only movie ever to exist that displays a small portion of our culture and contribution. And that has been a blessing and an honor. And one of the coolest things I was able to do was take the story of the whistle and how a motorcycle club approaches the set and turn that into a story in the telling of the arrival of the Black Knights on the set. And this was told to me when I came into the Black Sabbath. We weren't even doing this anymore. But George Magic Clark, George Magic Gilbert Clark the Third, Magic we called him, told me the story of the Black Sabbath and the whistle. And how when we used to pull up on the set, we used to pull up to the whistle, man. And everybody would scream Black Sabbath is here because when we hit the set, we were looking good. And so I relayed that story to Reggie Rock Bythewood, the director of the movie, and he went and he got some hot, beautiful, gorgeous um, choreographer, and she came in and she listened to my story and created almost like a dance routine to the whistle, to the pulling up on the whistle. And though there was no whistle in her rendition, it was a Hollywood rendition of what we did, it was bad to the bone. And it was my club all day long. Watch me. So one day I'm sitting there talking to the OG. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, just where he's coming from. You know, just wanted to know more about the club. And you know, the OG, they're never happy about anything. They're never happy with what you're doing because you didn't do it like they did it. And they always, they always hated that. So, the OG says, man, y'all don't know nothing about how to ride. And I was like, what do you mean we don't know nothing about how to ride? He said, listen, back when we did it, the Black Sabbath rode in style. We were military cats, most of us. We actually marched when we rode our motorcycles. I said, you marched when you rode your motorcycles? What do you mean? 
They said, oh yeah, man, marching. Hell, military-like operations march. They always have, and they always will. He said, you see, no matter what goes on, the motorcycle club has to look good. And we never believed in arriving someplace without the motorcycle club looking really good. So I said, well, what do you mean? He said, look here, man. Paramilitary organizations, armies, militaries, navies, they all marched. They all marched and they all were trying to look good. You see, when, when an organization comes in in style, looking good, formed up right, you, 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 you get a different feeling about them. They look like they got their stuff together. They look like they got their act together. They're loyal. They're dedicated. They're disciplined. They know how to move. They move efficiently. And they look like a force to be reckoned with. And they communicate because they're all on one page. And whenever we showed up, we made sure that our motorcycle club communicated. We looked well. The Black Sabbath was looking amazing. And I said, well, wow. He goes, yeah. He says, and you kids are lazy. You, you're lazy about bike riding. You, you don't do it like we used to. We, we, used to. we used to have pride in the way we pulled up. You guys look like a horde. So I said, oh, gee, tell me about it. So he said, well, we had two things you guys don't have today. We had the whistle and we had the parade. So I leaned forward to hear some more. He said, so when we pulled up, we would roll down, ride down the street two by two in perfect formation, peg to peg, everybody looking sharp. And like if we were gonna go to some sort of a organization, let, let's say we were gonna go to a club annual. Well, we'd have the road captain stop about, oh, maybe a mile or two from that annual. And so what he would do is he would go in or he would send somebody and they would go and they would um, check out the situation. They'd check out the lay of the land, check out the layout. So now they would come back and they would let us know, okay, we're gonna be parking over there. This is the layout so that we would know how to conduct the parade. I said, the parade? He said, yeah, the parade. So as we're rolling down the road, all of a sudden, when we got a, maybe a few blocks from the destination, the road captain would put this signal up and that meant everybody was to go in single file. And when you went in a single file, you looked like you had twice as many people because you had a long line of bikes. And we'd come riding through, revving the engines, vroom, 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 vroom. And everybody inside the club would hear us and they would know, oh my goodness, what's that rumble? The Black Sabbath must be here. And he says, that was the parade. And he goes, when militaries march, the parade in review is the most critical march ever because that's when you're marching in front of the brass and they're gonna be looking at you and you throw your chest up and you march and you look over and you throw that salute or you, you twirl your gun or whatever it is you do, that's when you're looking the strongest. So whenever we would parade in front of a motorcycle club, we would consider that a parade in review. And we'd be sitting tall in the saddle, revving them engines so everybody could see Black, Dragon, Black Sabbath is pulled up. So then we would spin back around and then we would park. And the way we would park is every bike would go perpendicular to the curb, pull out, and that's when the road captain would pull out that whistle. first blow and when he blew that whistle all of a sudden everybody would back up vrooming them engines hard once everybody got backed up we'd all look down at the road captain and he would blow that whistle and all the kickstands would come down at the same time all the bikes would lean over at the same time the brothers would grab a hold of them keys, shut the bikes off at the same time, and we would all step off our motorcycles in unison. And then depending on how we felt, 
we might even scream, Black shut up! A breed apart! Woo! And I had never seen our club do that before. And just to hear about how the OGs did it, I promised myself if I ever became a president, we'd be bringing that back. And lo and behold, it came to pass that I did become a president. And one of the first things I brought back was the parade in review and the whistle. My guys were like, oh man, give us a break with this old stuff, man, cut it out. But then we went over to the Wheels of Soul Clubhouse one day, back in about, oh, I want to say 2010, 2011, something like that. And we blew that whistle. We did that parade. We backed in, slammed their motorcycles all over at the same time. And them OGs came running out the wheels, wheels of soul screaming, don't you come over here with that whistle, boy. We know what that's all about. We know all about that damn whistle. Don't come over here like we don't know what that's about. And it was the most exciting thing to have them recognize what we were doing from the old school days. So as it came to pass, I got an opportunity to create a movie called Biker Boys. I was a technical advisor on, a mo on the movie and it was the most exciting. And so when the director, Reggie Rock Bythewood, said to me, in the first scene, the Black Knights are gonna be pulling up and they've got to look good. Is there anything that motorcycle clubs do that's special? And I said, oh yeah, there's something my club does that's special. And I would love to capture that on the silver screen for people to see forever and ever and ever. And so I explained to him how we did it and his eyes lit up. And the next thing I know, some choreographer was flown in and she put well, the Hollywood flair on it. Not quite exactly what we did, but the Hollywood flair. And you saw it in the first scene of Biker Boys when they pulled up, all them kickstands went down and the Black Knights jumped off them motorcycles and screamed Black Knights. And I thought to myself, the world will now know forever who we are and how we ride because it was depicted on the silver screen. And that might last, God only knows how many eons. Watch me! Watch me! I got it! Watch me! I got it! Hey! No. I got something that makes me roll shit! I got something that tells me what it's all about! We will last, our legacy will last, because that that you saw was how Black Sabbath pulls up. When I became national president, I rebirthed it across the entire nation. And I did it as an ode, a tribute, a thank you to the OGs who rode before us and twisted them throttles in the name of our club so we could twist the throttles in the name of our club later. They did it first. And we don't want to forget everything about them. We don't want to forget most things about them. And what we want to remember the most is why they did what they did and what made them do it forever. From young men in the early 20s until they died, the original seven and the other OGs, they kept Black, Harvard and Black Sabbath in their hearts and they kept Black Sabbath in their souls and in their minds. And even when 
OG Coochie passed away. He made OG Magic promise on his deathbed. Please, OG Magic, please always keep the Black Sabbath alive and never let it die. And when OG Magic told me of the promise that he made to OG Coochie, I silently made that same promise myself. And now, I believe, for as long as that film is alive, in some aspect, the mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club nation will be alive. So, what can you bring to your nation, you should ask yourself. Not what my motorcycle club can bring to me, but rather what I can bring to my mighty motorcycle club nation. You are an embodiment of your brothers and the four brothers and the forefathers that came before you. You might have died or passed on or moved on long before I ever knew your name, but you were Black Sabbath and you will always be a brother in my heart even if you're lying in your grave. For the brothers I didn't get to meet, we still carry in that heartbeat on for you. And so, to you brothers out there of your Motorcycle Club Nations, work hard to do the best you can to keep those traditions alive because they're good and they're wholesome and they represent the best parts of us, the best things that we had to give, the best things that the OGs had to give, the things that they lived for and breathed for. These guys breathed and lived and loved their motorcycle clubs. And for us to do it any less is a great dishonor. I'd like to thank you for taking these few moments to listen to me. And I'd like to ask you to reflect upon what you can do to make your motorcycle club last forever and ever so that the mark you make on history survives like those paintings those brothers made in those caves so many eons ago. Knowing that one day they would no longer be here, but people might want to know how they lived. So you can go deep off in those caves and see those cavemen drawings. What kind of drawing are you going to leave? It's the legacy. It's the legacy that makes you live forever. Hail to my Motorcycle Club Nation and hell to yours too. Well, that's my two cents. Let us know what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny. Ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. The X1 single, the X1, the X1. 
The ex one single, ain't ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. The ex one single, ain't ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. The ex one single, ain't ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. The ex one single, ain't ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. The ex one single, ain't ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. The ex one single, ain't ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. The ex one single, ain't ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. Like you 